Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! When I was a front desk agent at a hotel, we hired a new night's auditor who worked the shift right after me most days. I have been asked to stay one hour later, basically overlapping our shifts, for a week or two to help her get a grasp on some of the basic stuff that she might have forgotten during her training. This lady was your very typical cat lady. Literally. Probably about 60, looked like she lived in a trailer park, scraggly hair, didn't smell great. Why she was hired, I don't know, but either way, that's what it was. Two or three days in, she started coming and smelling of alcohol. She worked nights alone, meaning I was the only one who would have seen her in this state. The first two times I didn't really say anything. I didn't know her well or her situation, but I kept an eye out because she seemed lazy and incompetent. She was also just a rude lady in general that wasn't nice to guests or me. Then one day, right when she came in to start her shift, I got slammed. A tour bus of Asians came in at 10 p.m. and I was scrambling to check them all in. Usually, these people, we got a lot of tour buses, would not really understand etiquette and would demand that we connect them to the Wi-Fi. They usually didn't speak English and their phones were not in English. Needless to say, I was completely overwhelmed. First offense, she just stood there when the phone was ringing. She said she was too scared to answer it. I'm not the manager, but I finally told her, hey, you have to answer the phone and I need help right now. I was still in the middle of the tour bus mess. She still didn't answer the phone and watched me check them in. Second defense. When the people were coming up to us after a chicken in motion for us to sign them into the Wi-Fi, she would shake her head and shrug her shoulders and then point to me. Basically saying, I don't speak your language, go to her. Third offense. She reeked of alcohol. Fourth offense. As the tour group was headed up to the rooms and was basically done, she said to me, Hey, do you mind if I go run and grab a pizza? I'm starving. Ah, uh, lady, you just got to work and also, you could just order delivery. I'm not staying here doing your job. Fifth offense. She called my personal cell three times, one past midnight, instead of our manager to ask very, very obvious questions. Six offense, she looked in my personal binder that I kept in the office for my login. She used my login to do all of her work that night. The next day, my manager was pissed at me because it looked like I had overbooked us because it was under my login. That was it. So, two days later on my shift, she came in and I changed my tone. I asked her what her favorite bar was and we started talking casually. I secretly turned on my recorder on my phone and got her to admit to drinking right before work. She even admitted to driving drunk to work. Most incriminating, she asked if I wanted to sneak a bottle of wine from our bar later. I excused myself to the bathroom and called my manager. She showed up and I told her everything. And I left. The next shift I learned that she had been fired and escorted by police out of the premises. They found drugs in her vehicle and arrested her in our parking lot. My reward? Well, I knew how to look at the video cameras and watch the whole thing back with audio was my maintenance guy. Ah, some people. I thought was escaping retail two years ago, mostly uncased, that I would never have to deal with a Karen. I was wrong. I'm still kind of embarrassed with how I reacted, so my typing is a little frantic. So for the cast you've got me is myself, Dumb Karen, Walmart employee, and my former manager. So this week I actually get to be home for a few days. I am an over-the-road truck driver that runs a dedicated load every week across the country and nowhere near home. My co-driver aka my dad and I pretty much run 40 plus weeks out of the year and usually take a solid month off or so when we want to be home or go on vacation out of the country. Any other time is just a day or two here and there when we can just happen to get to town. But this time we got to go home for a solid week. You know what that means? Home cooked meals. I love to cook and to do so, I needed fresh groceries. 
Stubby me decided to run to Walmart solo instead of the neighborhood grocery store down by my house. And boy, do I regret that now. I actually enjoy Walmart much too. Everyone's shock. I'm a former employee, you see. An ex-cashier that according to my former co-workers has an unshakable customer service personas that couldn't be wavered by two years of retail abuse. I actually rather like the job being the people pleaser masochist as I am and I had quite a number of regulars and employees that I still like to chat with when I'm out shopping. This day I'd finished catching up and had moved deeply into my hunt for the ingredients I needed for a new recipe I was eager to try. I was having trouble finding a certain spice among the variety before me when it happened. The classic Karen throat clearing. Full disclosure, I have no idea how long the woman I looked up to finding glaring at me had been trying to get my attention. I had on my blue parrot headset that I usually wear when driving and at the time was using it to ironically listen to scary Walmart stories by a YouTuber while my eyes were scanning the shelves and checking the recipe list on my phone. Needless to say, I hadn't been looking for human interaction at that moment. But like usual, my knee-jerk customer service persona, which is just me giving a polite smile and friendly eyes, kicked in and I shifted my cart away from the shelves while also muting my phone. I say, I'm sorry if I'm... You shouldn't ignore a customer like that. It is so unprofessional. Honestly? Why do they appoint barely teenagers to management? Karen scolds me a bit, more ranting about management meaning experience, but really I only paid attention to the first thing she said to me. My mind had wandered of looking from her to down at myself. To her credit, I was dressed nice, but not exactly what I call professional, with pastel pink caprice, flouncy olive green plows and shiny metallic bronze flats. What can I say? I like dressing nice and colorful when I'm not at risk of getting Diesel on my clothes. Karen was a middle-aged local classic pain in a behind whose sense of fashion often hurt my eyes. This one looked like she just rolled out of the trailer park wearing a camel hoodie with pink, black workout pants that probably had never seen the inside of a gym, lime green running shoes, and bottle blonde hair done up in a ponytail pulled through the back of a very loved baseball cap. To complete the look, she had a huge coach purse sitting in her buggy beside her. A bag even I know cost more than her entire outfit times three. Yeah, typical Karen for where I'm from, ma. I say, listen, I don't work here. If you need help with something though, all you need to do is press that button and it will call someone for you. I gestured to need help, call button, located on a post about two paces behind me up the aisle. Usually, I wouldn't mind helping someone who couldn't find something. I had former customers ask for my help all the time. If I wasn't busy and they were nice or just elderly, I was a big hit with the elderly because I'm a sucker for little old ladies. So far, Karen wasn't any of those things and she had a perfume on that was making my nose itch, so I was hoping to shoo her away. No such luck. Karen scowls at my suggestion. Why are you lying? You work here. You've checked me out numerous times and I don't appreciate being lied to. The nerve. To be honest, I felt this mixture of confused resignation and completely dropped my smile and sighed. I'm only as nice as I want to be. In truth, I have a resting witch face that makes me very unapproachable according to my best friends. Listen, I don't work here anymore and I'm in the middle of getting my own groceries. So let's just not, okay? Turning back to the shelf to spices, I checked my phone again before glancing over the selection before finally finding what I needed. Just as I move to put it in my buggy and move along with my day, I get a sharp, nasty pain in the side of my head. I yelped, probably louder than necessary, but I was so caught off guard by the pain that I didn't care. Plus, I'm very tender-headed. Apparently, Karen was not happy with me and grabbed a hold of my headset and yanked it off my head. Unfortunately for me, I have very thick, very wavy hair that for some reason, other people envy. Not me though, and especially not when the headrest of my headset tangled in my hair from the way she tried to snatch it off and instead she ended yanking and pulling out more than a few strands of my hair. Even with such a yank, she didn't manage to free it from my hair and just ended up dropping it, causing the headset to tangle further in my hair 
and cause gravity to yank my hair mercilessly again. Most people would have stopped and apologized after realizing what they've done. Not caring though. Don't you dare walk away from me. How dare you speak to me that way? I don't care if you're management now or what. You still work at Walmart. You're still not as important as me. Her last comment made me pause in the midst of me trying to free my hair from my headset. Eyes watering, scalp throbbing. I always have hated how people look down on people working at Walmart. Majority of the cashiers and floor associates that I knew at this store were either students or were retired professionals like teachers, nurses, office workers. Most of our older staff were just part-timers to have something to do. I was pissed. I don't work here. I tell her. Not this again. I told you. I don't work here. I don't work here. I don't work here. I don't work here. I just kept repeating myself getting louder and louder until I was practically screaming at her, making her back away from me. Something I had learned early on as a child was that I was the last kind of person people expected to hear yell. I don't know if it's the way I look or just the vibe I give off. I don't know, but either way, I've learned to use it to my advantage to get people to back off. But the screaming also started to draw attention to us as people started coming into the aisle to see what was happening. Among the people included a Walmart employee I was familiar with even though she started after I left in my former manager. By the time they showed I had finished screaming and was now just clearing at the shell-shocked and probably embarrassed Karen who was written in the face. The employee asks, what's going on here? Is someone hurt? Karen points a finger at me first as I'm catching my breath and have started fiddling with my hair again, trying to get it untangled. This girl went crazy when I tried to ask her where something is and she started screaming in my face and even swung at me. She needs to go to jail or at least be fired. By the end of her speech, big crocodile tears were streaming down her face and one of the random customers who had come to watch was patting her shoulder and trying to console her. The Walmart employee and a former manager of mine turned to me just as I finally get my headset free with a good clump of hair still wrapped around the headdress and look up meeting their gazes. Manager asks me, OP, are you alright? What happened? Why were you screaming? What was all the hair? The former manager of mine plus her didn't even wait for my response. I really wasn't in a state of mind to give one as I tend to go mute when I get very, very upset. As she looked from my distraught face to my hand still holding the headset and mess of hair hanging limply from it before turning back to Karen who was quietly regaling some of the crowd with just how horrific I had been, she says, excuse me, but can you tell me what happened again and also perhaps tell me why Opie is holding a chunk of her hair? What about her hair? I told you she attacked me. I'm the victim here. Are you believing her over me because she's your employee? The Walmart employee says. That still doesn't answer her question. Did you pull out OP's hair? What kind of person does that? The crowd begins to murmur and Karen obviously realizes she's losing popular opinion. In the meantime, I'm starting to calm down and rub at my scalp, trying to dissipate the pain. Luckily, no blood. I was, I was just asking her a question and she ignored me. I pulled off her headphones to, to, to get her to listen to me. It's, it's not my fault she doesn't brush her hair. Well, that's assault. Why would you ever put your hands on someone? And now you're telling everyone that she attacked you? What's the matter with you? The manager adds, I think it's time we called for the sheriff's department. Karen's eyes widened as she seemed to come to the realization that she might have screwed with the wrong person. But as I've said before, I can be nice when I want to. I say, I'm fine, just make her leave me alone. I don't want to spend one of my precious nights at home with a police officer unless he's buying me dinner. This made the crowd laugh. Are you sure, OP? Manager asks me. No, but I have cold things to get home, a dinner to cook and my dad's probably wondering what's taking so long. To that, my former manager nodded and forced Karen to follow her while the crowd quickly dispersed and went back to their own shopping. The employees stayed with me and we chatted while I got the last few things I needed I went to check out. The manager came up to me after I finished paying and told me she'd had the woman banned from this store. To be honest, that really sucks for her because 
This is the only Walmart in this county, and the closest Walmart I know of is over a 40 minute drive from where I live. Apparently though I wasn't the first person she had harassed here, although all the others have been actual employees, and the security feed that she reviewed clearly showed the woman trying to snatch off my headset, the former manager tells me that if it had been here, she would have shocked the woman in the mouse, which is really surprising because my former manager was a former elementary school teacher who taught for close to 40 years before retiring and taking up the management position to stay active and supplement her income. The manager has a patience of a saint but says she wouldn't have hesitated to backhand Karen after I explained to her what Karen had said to me. We chatted some more, laughed a bit and then I went home. I am sorry it was so long but I just had to get it out of my system in order to sleep tonight and I knew there were irate people in this world but I never thought I'd meet such a self-entitled Karen in real life. Update. I'll take it back. I should have had her arrested the first go around. This woman has made my nice peaceful week at home a freaking nightmare. Yes, I ran into Karen again today but this time at Lowe's. So the new cast is the dumb Karen who didn't learn her lesson the first time, me, the awesome dad of mine, and boss, Blow's employee that I know, and Lowe's manager who I am familiar with. So I decided to run another errand while I was home for the week. This time it was to Lowe's to pick up some mulch for my awesome dad's newly built raised flower beds and a few odds and ends like metal piping, spray paint and screws for a home project, I decided to start. Dad is a few aisles over from me picking up the spray paint while I was looking at screws and chatting with the employee for a few minutes about my cat, my own sphinx cat, a hairless cat named Pan, who will go with me anywhere if I let him. Since Lowe's is pet friendly, he usually tags along with me every trip and sits in a child seat without complaining the whole time. All of the staff here adore him and are constantly stopping me for a visit and a chat. The employee being the most often to visit because her section is right next to the main entrance. After the employee leaves to check her section, but not before promising to bring back some cat treats for Pan, I turn my attention back to the screws. I kid you not, mere seconds after the employee leaves, I hear someone growl out. You! I turned around wide-eyed to find Karen standing there behind her cart, glaring at me. Let me note before this exchange that I am wearing jean shorts, a red blouse with a bandana print, flip-flops and my hair pulled up with a scrunchie. I was a definition of non-professional attire and I certainly don't look like a Lowe's associate. So this is where you work. Sorry. Oh, you will be sorry. Where is your manager? I demand you get him for me now. I want you fired after what you did to me the other day. I'll admit I wasn't on my best game at the moment. It had been a long day. Dad and I had spent most of it out in the yard, checking on the progress of the lawn. We had laid grass seed before we went back to work at the end of May, and also shoving soil into the raised flower beds. I was sun tired, and this woman had enough malice to knock the wind out of your sails. I tell her, I don't work here either, lady. Liar! I saw you talking with your co-worker. No one talks that much with staff unless you're an employee. Now go give me your manager. Now! Her comment really irritated me. By her logic, I should also work at the bank, the water company, the electric company, the Dollar General, Wits Barbecue, the Pilot, and pretty much everywhere else that I run errands in town. Especially the places I take pen. He's such a well-behaved baby and an easement for people to approach me and strike up conversation. Plus, I really do enjoy talking with people. But this woman? This woman acted like anyone working or making a living was beneath her. It disgusted me. I tell her, are you deaf? I don't work here. And the employee and I were just talking about my baby here. Baby? Confused Karen peeks around me at Ben sitting there doing his best yoga pose with back legs thrown high in the air while he cleaned his leg. And Karen shrieks, making me step back into the shells because damn, I was not expecting that. Meanwhile, Pan doesn't even acknowledge her. He's too busy cleaning and used to loud noises from living on a truck. What is that hideous creature? Whoa, whoa. Hang on, wait a minute. 
How dare you bring that disgusting thing in a store? It's a naked rat. It's my cat, you dummy. I actually think the woman was getting ready to throw something at me and slash Orpen if the employee didn't appear coming up the aisle followed by my dad. He tells her, ma'am, would you please calm down? OP, what's going on? This girl brought a disgusting creature into the store. Get me a manager. I want her fired then banned. The employee says, disgusting? And my dad adds, fired? The employee says, ma'am, this is a pet friendly store. And Pan Pan is a welcome guest. He may be unusual looking, but he's a very good fur baby. That thing is an abomination. What if children saw it? While the employee was defending my little Pan's honor, my awesome dad nudged me to get my attention. What the hell's going on with this woman? I tell him, remember that stupid woman I told you about that thought I still worked at Walmart? The one that pulled out your hair when she tried to snatch off your headset? Uh-huh. And that is when my awesome dad's eyes went from mildly annoyed to fully pissed off. I wish there was an analogy for dads like there is for moms. You know, tiger mom or mama bear. My dad really deserves one, especially when he's upset on my behalf. Dad has a big heart and is a surrogate dad to any and all who need one. But biologically, I am his only child. I am his number one priority. And Karen dared to miss with me. He tells me, tell the employee to get her manager. He steps forward, calling for Karen's attention, who is still ranting about Pan. Another bad move on her part because my dad refers to him as his grandbaby. He says, I am OP's boss. What exactly did she do to you? Karen gets the smug grin on her face for a minute as she looks from the employee to me and then back to my dad. It is then that her face twists into this tricking expression as she recounts to my dad how I harassed her in Walmart a couple of days ago and got her thrown out of the store because I was friends with the management and how I had spotted her today and started threatening her and taunting her and yelling at her to get out of the store. This woman had a screw loose. I managed to mumble to the employee to go fetch the manager towards the beginning of her story and the employee scurried off, coming back fairly quickly with her manager in tow just as Karen was demanding my dad to kick me out and how she couldn't believe employees acted like this and brought ugly animals to their place of work. The manager stepped up looking around at our little group, slightly confused. Apparently, the employee had only told him a customer was harassing another customer and to hurry. The manager says, I'm the shift manager. What seems to be the problem here? Dad says, yeah, sorry to bother you, but this woman came up and started screaming at my daughter. She assaulted her at the Walmart on Friday and got banned from the store. Now she seems to think she can get my daughter banned from here in return, so she's making wild accusations. Karen's jaw drops at my dad's calm, albeit stern explanation as she looks between me and him. I don't know how she didn't realize he was my dad. I bear a striking resemblance to him, although most people say we look the most alike when we smile and we weren't smiling right now. Your daughter? I thought you said you were her manager. No, I said I was her boss, which I am. She doesn't work here or at Walmart. You! Karen made a strangled sound in her throat. Her face turned almost purple in shade. Whatever she wanted to say, I guess words couldn't convey because she suddenly launched herself at us, arms raised, fingers curled like claws ready to scratch our eyes out. My awesome dad was too quick for her though, as he shoved me out of the way and sidestepped her, causing Karen to run full force into the shelf behind us. She's lucky the lower drawers kept her from impaling herself in the eye with the hanging racks. Judging by her screams though, I'm pretty sure she scratched the hell out of her arms as she fell back onto the floor none too gently. Karen began shouting assault and for help and, of course, for the police. She got her wish. The manager radioed for security and in less than a minute, two guys were hauling a screeching and cursing Karen up and marching her towards the front of the store. The police were called and what should have been a 30-minute shopping trip turned into an hour and a half long ordeal was speaking with the multiple managers. Given our statements to the police, Watching Karen lose it on the police and have to be tasered in order to be handcuffed. 
and agreeing that this time, yes, I definitely wanted to press charges. They took security tapes and I gave them the name of my former manager from Walmart to contact, confirming the earlier incident, as well as see about getting their security tapes as well. We then finally got to pay for our stuff, and the manager insisting on giving us 10% off our final purchase price for all the trouble. Plus, he knew from working with us in the past just how much we'd spent at his tour in the last year while we've been landscaping my dad's new property. That made my dad very happy and he spent the last couple hours calling up his buddies and telling them about the lunatic at Lowe's and how he got a discount. He's a simple person to please. I wish he wouldn't have told his wife though because she got very upset and worried about us. It's her normal state and demanded for us to leave the rest of the yard work and my project until tomorrow and to just relax for the rest of the night. We obliged her and I'm taking part of my resting time to write this update. I am so shocked by this woman. I have never been spoken to by a stranger like this outside of my stint doing retail. Is this just how some people are? God, I hope she gets help. She won't be finding it at Lowe's though because we were assured that Karen was banned from there as well. And as a side note, Lowe's is also the only home improvement store in our county. The next available one is a Home Depot about a 30 minute drive up the interstate. Sucks to be her. Update number 3. So hello again to everyone. I know all of you have been waiting on some sort of update as to what happened to the woman after she was arrested. The quick and simple version of it is she is in a county jail. I was contacted a few weeks ago. I was informed that she pled guilty on all charges as a part of a plea deal. You see, at the time of her arrest, and yes, on top of her charges for harassing and assaulting me, she was also charged with resisting arrest and assault on an officer because apparently she spit on his face. She was also carrying a controlled substance. They didn't say what exactly and I didn't think to ask. And apparently she had enough of it that the charge was up to position was intent to sell. I'm assuming the deal was about getting her supplier but they didn't give me any details about it because it was still an ongoing case. So don't quote me on that. Mom and I were sharing out of work here lady stories and she shared how she met my stepdad. I knew they met at an airport but I didn't get the full details. Until now. Several years ago mom was a brand new flight attendant. Her dream job. She was heading to her gate, excited for her first ever flight as an attendant. But she got stopped by our villain, Karen. The conversation went roughly as follows. Excuse me. Hi, how may I help you? I need you to upgrade us to first class. Oh, um, I'm sorry, but you'll need to talk to the gate agent. I'm a flight attendant. Mom could understand Karen's confusion because gate agents and flight attendants wore the same uniform. However, they are completely different departments. A gate agent can't do what a flight attendant can do and vice versa. Karen says, I don't care. You're going to upgrade me to first class. Poking mom in the chest. Right now. Enter our hero. Stepdad, who just so happened to be the captain of mom's flight. He was getting some coffee at a nearby shop and he overhears Karen's entitled rant. He comes up. What seems to be the problem, ma'am? Finally. I am Karen and I need to be put in first class on flight 123. That's my flight. I'll speak to the gate agent after you apologize to my flight attendant for your entitled behavior. Or I will have you kicked off my flight. Now most people would agree to this, but as you can probably guess, Karen isn't one of them. Instead, Karen then does the stupidest thing you can imagine. She tries to punch stepdad in the face. What Karen and mom didn't know is that stepdad is a navy veteran who used to train fighter pilots and is in good shape. The next thing mom knows, stepdad has twisted Karen around, had her arms pinned behind her back and called for security. The flight ends up being late because mom and stepdad were given statements and agreeing to press charges. Karen ended up getting pressed with assault charges and getting banned from the airline. That evening, once everyone finishes up, Stepdad comes up to mom. Again, the conversation went like this. Hey, I wanted to apologize for that. I heard you're brand new and I hope that hasn't scared you off from your job. Nah, I have two kids. 
It takes more than that to scare me. Still, I want to make it up to you. Are you free this evening? I know a really great restaurant in town. Well, I'd love to. A few years later, they got married. So first, some information. A little while ago, I couldn't use my left foot because I got in an accident while skiing. I was lucky because my grandma has an automatic car where you only need your right foot for gas or brakes. So I was going to do some shopping in a town where I live, not that big, and there are only two spots for disabled people, opposite of the small walkway in the middle. These parking spots have a sign, attached to two poles for whatever reason, on the walkway signed. I see cars already parked in those spots, which pisses me off, but it happens. The bad side is that the closest parking spot is quite far, but I settle with it and so I park on the other side of the parking space. During my walk, as far as you can call it, with those hums on both sides, I look at the cars parked like I always do. It's fun to see the difference in taste for cars, and also at the ones in the disabled spots. In my country, you need a special blue card under your front window to show you're disabled. If you don't have it and still park there, the ticket is expensive. And it pisses me off, but I can't do much because I couldn't really kick it, right? So I do my shopping and return to my car to see that both cars are still at the spot. But the car without the card has someone sitting in it. And just to be helpful, I walk up to his window, knock on it, and ask him to not park at these kind of spots because He's making it a really hard time for people like me, or worse, to walk that far. I was just trying to be helpful, but the man responded by opening the door as hard as he could and hit my leg in the process. A smirk and an annoying sorry only an entitled brat could say. I knock again and he gives me the middle finger, but drives away anyway. Skip one week and I drive up to the area again just to visit a friend who lives there. I see the same car standing in a spot. Thinking by myself about what the bad barker did to me. I wanted him to feel how annoying it was if someone parked somewhere you weren't supposed to. And as luck was on my side, there wasn't any other parking space left. So I parked right behind the bad barker's car with very little space. As I climb out of my car, the bad barker comes up to me and starts demanding to move my car because I was not supposed to park there or else he will call the police. As a jerk that I am, I gave him a smirk and a sorry that only an entitled brat could say, I walked off to my friend's home, leaving him swearing at me. The parking space is right in front of a store and there is camera security over the whole area, with an additional camera pointed towards the entrance and the disabled parking spots. My friend opens a door and we just hang out for a while, when suddenly we hear a loud bang outside. My friend looks at the window and asks me what my car looks like and where I parked it. I give him the description and then he follows up to tell me I should check on my car and see what has happened. We both walk out and see my car has a huge dent and a lot of scratches. Turned out the bad barker just forced his way out and the only possible way was through my car as the poles with a sign are unbreakable. Apparently, this wasn't the first time this kind of stuff happens and one of the store employees walks out and tells us everything was probably recorded and we could easily sue him for what he did. However, I was pissed. I wanted to let him have a chance to explain himself because it could have been something very urgent and I didn't want to be that big of a douche. He turned out to be a regular customer of the store and the store employee were helpful with calling him. He was pissed. He said I had no right to park behind and if I didn't pay for the damages I did, apparently, he'd call the cops on me. After he was done ranting off, I asked him politely why he crashed through and if he could pay for the damages done to my vehicle. He snapped and squared at me through the phone, which was apparently being recorded by the store employee, which I figured in court. But I cut him off and told him he could either pay or I would sue him for not only parking wrong or damaging my car, but also for attacking me was his door. But he hung up on me. So I called the cops on him. Through the store employee, they got his phone number and license plate and they told me to sue him. So I did. In court, it became also clear he had multiple tickets still open, which he didn't pay. He got a ticket for parking on a disabled spot and he has to pay me for all the damage done and a fine for attacking a disabled person. I was thrilled and felt I did some justice. 
Moral of the story, don't be a douchebag and park where you're supposed to, or it may cost you more than a ticket.